I want to ask you, you said the M word. So I wanted to ask you, how many of your customers ask you about mold? And what is your response? Oh, it's a pretty common thing out here. I don't say the M word to customers in their home unless they have a lab report saying when it was tested, what the results were. If they have a industrial hygienist that has a lab report that says it's mold, then I'll say it's mold. Other than that, it's suspect microbial growth and it's not supposed to be in there. And I take pictures of it and say, I can send it to a lab. It's going to provide some insights, but we can also just completely remove it from your system. So I do install a lot of like supply plenum metal ones that are externally wrapped to replace internally lined ones. How often do you get a customer that's, Hey, I, w I would like to get that further testing done to analyze it and understand the Latin name of whatever I have growing here. Does that Never. happen? Never. Well, usually they will have done the testing first and then contacted us because they had that result. Gotcha. So usually if they're the, if they're the ones that are like a mold sensitive individual, they will have the report before I even get there that they're showing me. And once I've seen it and it's their report in their home, I'm okay with saying mold. But other than that, I just tell people I'm not a laboratory mold testing verifier. Once the mold is cleaned or removed, I'm just wondering what Zach does after that, if anything else. Yeah. Depending on the extent of the growth, most of the time I'm removing that, that fiberglass from the ductwork. I keep a bit of RA blanket wrap with the FSK screen facing on our trailer for rewrapping the exterior, but I'll pull out the entire interior liner of a supply plenum. We've got a fiberglass encapsulant sealant paint. That'll, that will seal the residual fibers down to the metal on the inside and it's antimicrobial when it dries. But other than that, I insulate the outside. In some cases, if it's duckboard, I'll just put on a brand new metal plenum box. I've got a shop manager that lives across the street from me and I text him the dimensions of a box I need and I'll just let the client know I'm going to pick up a, pick up a metal plenum box for you tonight. And you will swing back and reinstall this soon. If it's pretty moldy, I'm, I'm trying to get it out of that system completely. Sometimes in the very beginning, early growth, where you're seeing a little specks here and there, and it hasn't really penetrated that top layer of the insulation liner. At that point, I can contact vacuum it and seal it with our coating, and it does pretty well. Every couple of years, we'll come back for dryer vent cleanings and a follow-up inspection on their system. And I can reinspect their system, make sure that and we've also got the underlying cause that enabled the mold growth in the first place. If it's something that we can correct, if it's they're not putting filters in or things like that that are out of my control past the data service, then at least I'll know and we can clean off the paint the surface of the paint's antimicrobial and it's not fairly non-porous, so we can wipe it off. But when it's insulation, we can't. So yeah, that was my question. What is it about those um, internally insulated plenums that produces suspect micro microbial or mold growth? Yeah. For one, filters are not airtight. They're the way homeowners put them in or service techs put them in, they're, they're not taping all the way around the borders. They're, they don't capture everything. And we really see proof of that a lot of times with our fire restoration jobs where we'll see some of that smoke bypass the coil around the side. And I can see the streaks where the soot has gone around the filter as well. Over time, as the dust gets into the supply plenum and starts to line it, and moisture pull over from the coils gets blown into it. it the environment is just natural for growth to occur. So 
how is it that fiberglass is different, duckboard is different? Because it's so much more porous that it grabs and holds on to the dirt and dust that gets into the airstream much, much more than the metal does. In seven years of duck cleaning, I've seen mold twice on metal, and it was always on perforated metal and spiral duct. So it was like sandwich duct that had had the perforated layer, and some of the dust was catching those perforations. But the porosity of the insulation liner compared to the metal is what makes it really grab the dust and dirt and have it stick more so than the metal will. So I'd just like to ask. Thanks, uh, dude. Zach, from the change. You said a wardrobe change. You went from taking a ski vacation to uh, you trapped in a duck. You're in the duct and we've got to, we've got to do something here. That's yeah. supposed to be black. Yeah. Okay. What are we looking at here? That's the supply plenum. And all that spotting is all growth. If you look to the left, bottom left side of it, where you can see that the liner is black and it's got the metal pins. Try, probably can't see on my cursor, but it's got a fire damper right there in the middle. And then just to the left of that damper, you'll see where it branches out of the trunk, out of the supply plenum to the trunk line. Now that was a different type of insulation liner right there, different manufacturer that had some kind of antimicrobial coating in their product, but the one on in the main supply plenum did not. So we see a lot of that in our area, and that's why we have, it's actually why, why our company is Southeast Clean Air Solutions is because we target the humidity specific issues that we have here in the Southeast. And, and fiberglass is, Probably one in every three homes that we see has fiberglass in their duct system. So it's pretty common here.